Hi everyone, another Richie's Road update here. Um, I know I was going to steer this campaign away from my family, but there's been some more dramas, so I've I've not been able. I can't I can't can't avoid it. Basically, uh, it has to be talked about, and it's 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 playing a big role, and it's do you know what I mean? It's affecting me big time and my road ahead. So I, I need to talk about this family stuff. Um, so I moved, as you know, so far I moved into the friend Jamie's house and um, I think that was about four or five days ago now I got out of his. Um, I mean, even getting to his, I went from my house to a friend's who explaining the situation, going through everything, they're super worried, calming it down, moving to Jamie's, explaining everything, calming it down, it's super stressful. And... Um, yeah, over Jamie's I was coming off morphine, weed, nicotine, all at the same time, getting quite shaky at points and realising right, I need I need to have a little bit of morphine and wean myself off that sort of thing. But the weed obviously can't smoke. I'm on the on the vape pen, still still on that all day, every day. Not all day, every day, but when I need to. Um, and I've noticed I've got I've got I've got some C B D oil. My um my mum was getting some, she saw some, and I've got, I've got quite a bit of that for probably, probably about 20 days, I think, about 20 days worth, 20, 25 days, um, but yeah, just had a little, little dab of that, and that, that takes away that sort of, um, yeah, just the shakiness, like morphine's really strong, and I've been taking a lot of it, when you just come off it, I don't, I don't really know what, morphine withdrawal is so like my legs are shaking quite a bit and things are getting a little bit intense and I'm thinking why why is this so I'm starting to feel better what's going on and then I have like a little bit of morphine just chills out all the shakiness and stuff like that so yeah it was moved into Jamie's then I got a phone call from one of dad's old friends um, he's like mate I've just seen all the stuff on 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 YouTube I can't believe it. I don't know what to say. Like your 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 family, as far as I'm concerned, I'm I'm going to pick you up. Even if you don't want picking up, I'm picking you up. You're coming round there. You're getting treated as family. You've got a permanent place to stay. You have your own room. You've got a big garden. Happy days. Do you know what I mean? Oh, thank you so much. That's that's perfect. We've just got a place now to to um get some food in me. Nice chilled environment. Brilliant! Thank you so much. That's that's amazing. I can't can't believe you're helping me so much. They're going to give us lifts to appointments, all this sort of thing. Plus, unbelievable. We set up set up my room, put everything in all the drawers and stuff over a couple of days. Set up all the kitchen stuff for Amy. She was she was getting full support from the husband and wife, the family the family we were staying with. Really impressed how Amy was out how hard she had to work to keep up with getting food in me every hour, explaining the situation, explaining the story, like, it sends up all, all, she, all you can talk about at some points, is this family stuff, it's just not productive at all, um, and she's felt really happy, comfy, loved, supported, all them things that she's, she's sort of needed to, to give me this 24 hour care. Um, on the first day, I so they come pick me up, moved everything out of Jamie's, moved into there, absolutely brilliant, sorted, first day is really active, out in the garden, sunbathing, eating, feeling amazing, and the second day, I think the elation of getting there was so great that I had such a, such a good energy, and I used quite a lot of it, being out in the garden there, the sun and that, and it was lovely, but the next day I was I was quite tired from doing that, I sort of overexerted myself a little bit, I didn't feel like I'd had, I could do, I could have the same day again, um, but I had a lovely chat with the, the husband and wife's daughter, she, she'd been diagnosed with Crohn's, she'd had, she's had 80% of her bowel removed, 30% of her small intestine removed, she might have to have a stoma bag in the future, She's, she's sort of controlling her side of it with all the diet and this sort of stuff, which is great. It seems to be working for her. But I'm a bit concerned that she, about the news, she might have a stoma bag in the future. That sort of makes me think that nothing's actually been cured. Um, I met a friend of their, their families as well. She, she'd been diagnosed with cancer and told she was going to die about 20 years ago, apparently. Um, she's just got the strength of an ox. She just will not give up. 
um, she drinks norm like caffeine tea every day, PG tips or whatever. She doesn't like drinking water. She'll have a Cadbury's mini roll or just basically whatever she wants to eat, she'll eat. Um, she's got no control over the diet at all, nothing. Just eats what she wants. Um, she's apparently she spends sort of four or five days in bed, and then she'll have a day where she's got energy to go and do something. But she'll have to sort of charge up that energy being around bed, and then force herself to to get out. She's got slow release morphine patches. Probably about six on her. God bless her, man. She's she's doing so well and so strong. But from my from my position, it looks like she's in pain every day, and she's not yet been cured, as far as I'm concerned. She's in she's in pain every day. Um, yeah, so I had that day, and that was all right. And in the evening, I thought, right, I'll, I'll st I'm feeling really good. That had some food, weights weights going up a little bit. Brilliant. Um, thought, yeah, I'll, I'll take this CBD oil this evening, and um, I haven't taken it since I've since I sort of come away from home because um, it's just been too erratic to, to, to get it sort of get anything sorted in place it's just concentrate on the food like yeah the CBD oil is great but we need to implement that properly let's just just concentrate on the food and moving around oh, mate. and um, yeah so I had a gram of that in the evening and man that and now I'm not smoking it you can you can feel the effects of it. It's really fucking strong. I was really 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 stoned. It's just just what I heard it was meant to be basically. So so really sort of happy with that with that news. Woke up in the morning and was still a bit stoned. Had about ten fifteen minutes giggling my head off. Um, yeah, it's really strong old stuff. And um, yeah, I'm not. I'm not taking it consistently. Like I haven't got dosage. I know. What, I know. I need to be taking a gram in the morning and a gram in the evening. Um, I need to get dosage sorted out. But I'm just having a little bit at the moment when I get shaky to sort of come off the oromorph and stuff like that. It's it's it's, it's using it and it's helping. Um, so yeah, everything's going well at this new house. Meeting some people that have been through some stuff. Um, the, the 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 family son put me in touch with a guy. Uh, he was amazing. He's, he's 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 a really incredible guy. He sent me through tons of links, information to look at and stuff, inspirational stories and and that that and the like. Um, yeah. So the wife, I think it gets to like the third day. The wife decides that she wants to talk to mum and sort of straighten things out and just just tell her what she thinks because she's in shock she's like I don't understand your mother at all I can't get my head around it like either, either way I look at it I don't understand it so she goes and meets her she comes comes back where I am I go I'm downstairs getting one of my protein shakes and she's the wife's sitting there on the internet looking at houses going oh yeah your mum's gonna looking at she, she might buy a house it's like, oh God, Cheryl, man, she doesn't need to be buying a house. I need, I need enough for a couple of months' rent to prevent someone at the benefits take it over. Like, don't, there's no, what, buy a house? What? It's going to take months. It, what a stupid waste of money. So it gets to around seven o'clock, and the wife's invited mum round without me knowing. And it's all going mental down there. They're all winding each other up speculating and talking rubbish telling me I need to get to A&E straight away you need to go to A&E, you need to go to A&E, I'm not going to fucking A&E if you want to get an ambulance round fine come and check me I don't mind and if they're, they're, they're screaming in my face I have to go to A&E, I have to go there don't I but I don't feel like I do so the ambulance turn up, two lovely girl paramedics check me over, take my blood pressure, listen to what I've been going through I mean, Cheryl and Mum and Angelo are all insistent I see the paramedic. The paramedics come up to the room I'm in. They're not even interested in, in sitting with the paramedic and finding out what they're doing. They're just sat downstairs speculating and arguing, not even paying an interest. Like, you rung them up. I didn't want to see them. Um, so, yeah. But they they had no immediate concerns and said if we take you to A and E, I don't even know where you're going to go or what you're going to do. Like yeah, you want these, these blood tests doing and stuff, but like it's now sort of I don't know getting on for ten o'clock at night. You really want to 
cart yourself down A and E. You're not like you need to be by your comforts and stuff. You need to. I've, I've got a hot water bottle and bum still quite a bit. I'm I'm doing better with it, but I've, it still relieves all the tension. I need to stay relatively warm. I haven't got any fat on me. Like I can't stay. Why well, don't want to sit in a big open A and E waiting room on a shit steel chair? Bright lights at ten o'clock at night. I'm tired. I just want to get some rest. But get these tests done in the morning if possible. I feel fine. Paramedics have no problem. So yeah, they're like, I don't even know what we do. You're not, you're not in danger. If you don't want to go to A and E, we can't take you to A and E. You're not. You're able to make your own decision. You're not on death's door. You obviously thin. That's apparent. But you're doing something about it. So yeah. Don't want to go at 10 o'clock at night to A&E. They got this supervisor around. He said, there's nothing we can do. He's fine. They're happy with what, what me and Amy are doing. This is a civil issue, not a health issue. You're now wasting the paramedics' time. They could be helping someone out who needs to get to hospital. Instead, they're just fucking dicking around, sorting out some civil issue with my family. So the, the paramedics have gone. Everything's going a bit mad. I've gone in the toilet. Mum bursts in and she's like, right, you've got two decisions. You stay at Zoe's and Amy's not there, or you stay at my house and Amy's not coming there. And I'm just like, uh, I just start crying. I'm just like, oh, fuck's sake. I don't even know. They're, they're your choices. That's got nothing to do with me. They're your, they're your fantasies, your ideas. So I'm just crying and thinking, oh God, what's what's happening here? Why, why is it so hard? And my mother shouts, don't turn on the waterworks. I've got quite a bit going on and I feel like I'm entitled to cry. It's not turning on the waterworks. So with that, I've got off the toilet and just forced her out of the room. I didn't even t say anything to her. I just got up and sort of, I didn't even really touch her. I just sort of motioned her out of the room like, get out, woman. Like, what? Why are, you, why are you being like this? It's like, I've got two choices. Are you some, why are you telling me my choices? That's ridiculous. It's you. You've got two choices. You can either help me or you can not help me. This is simple as that. It's not about, you have no choice. You have no deciding factor in this. This is, this is my illness and I'm going to beat it the way I want to beat it. I don't want to. I don't want to be going to A and E and fed the shit they give you there. They've offered no fucking help whatsoever. I, it's unreal. I'm not. I'm not going to people who don't help, who aren't interested in helping. Like I say, with the weight, they just let me lose weight and then say, "Oh, we can't operate on you." There was never any contingency plan. These doctors paid no interest in it. Other people, they don't pay any interest in it. You talk to them about diet and they look at you like you're an idiot. It's ridiculous. You, stuff you put in your body is going to make a difference to your body. So, the wife, like, so I push mum out of the room, have a chat with Cheryl and Amy. Like, she comes in the room, has a chat with me and Amy, and she's like, look, I'm sorry, we fucking love you a bit. Love Amy to bits. Believe in what you're doing is right. But um, Angelo's got this, this heart problem and he's on medication. He can't drink on the medication. He does like a drink. It calm him down a little bit. He's not an alcoholic or anything like that. Stretch of the imagination. But a little drink would have calmed him down. And it, it bless him. Do you know what I mean? His heart, he's in danger with it. Do you know what I mean? He's got to look after himself. And Cheryl's like, we can't have Angelo having a heart. Can't let my husband have a heart attack. And you being here and all this stress... Is leading to this. I'm so sorry, and I've, I've taken you out of your mate's house and brought you here. And but I can't. My husband can't. Was well, like, fair enough. That's a really. If you offered something and you not followed it through, but I can understand why. I'm not expecting you to risk your husband's life for my life. So, in all this craziness, um, Mum's just left. Don't know where she just ended up going. Um, um, we we booked a travel travel lodge. It was just literally around the corner. Booked a travel lodge, moved all the stuff there. And um, between all this, we've been offered a place in Shrewsbury. Amy's mate, 
And um, yeah, so the last couple of days I was in Travel Lodge, sorted out getting my van to drive there. Um, I was going to stay another night in the Travel Lodge, leave in the morning or leave today. Um, got a late checkout done, this, that, and the other. Ended up getting the van a little bit late. And then the Travel Lodge, I mean, is fully booked. <laughs> So I have to ring up the next one down the road and um, check myself in there. And they, they were so lovely. I, I booked the room and then Angel's rung them up just saying, oh yeah, if we can check in early, that, that'd be great. We've got this, this and that going on. The woman was just sort of shocked at the situation. We was in, she's like, right, uh, I've got a room you can go in straight away. It'll give you a free upgrade to like a family room so you've got a lot more space and a bit of a nicer environment. If you fancy using the staff kitchen, the fridge, whatever that's fine you can come in now I've got the room ready so don't worry about checking in early just just lovely people uh, amazing amazing help and charity from them um, so now I have the van I'm going to be heading off to Shrewsbury tomorrow for like three hour drive and getting there it's a lovely like green space nice calm environment be away from this family get my benefits sorted out get a doctor that's not involved in my family because I went to see him yesterday I managed to get Amy's friend to give me a lift to my doctor's. I sorted out an appointment first thing in the morning. Saw him yesterday. They said about these tests, and he's like, why do you want the test done? I'm like, well, I sort of want to know the chemistry and what's happening in my body. I'm using these supplements to adjust it. It'd be good to know what's happening, have a record of what's going on for my sake, and, and I, 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 can, I can work with this information. Like, I'm interested in my health, doctor. Like, you 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 work for me. I don't work for you. I'm telling. I'm done taking. I'm taking over this healthcare stuff. You've offered me nothing, no tests, and now you're surprised I even want a test. And he's basically just looking through the tests, just like, well, I can't do most of these. And as he was going through them, he sort of persuaded himself that they were a good idea. It was just obvious. It was like, why are you why are you, why are you being like this? And he says, right, well, I can book you in for a blood test in a week's time. So, oh, great, a week for a blood test, brilliant. Or you can go to hospital and get one done there, yeah, I've got to sit around for two, three hours, super uncomfortable to get a blood test. They do do a ticket system, so I can go there, I can get a ticket, or someone can go and get a ticket, and then come back in a few hours and go straight in. But I don't want to be hanging around the hospital for two, three hours. It's not fair, it's just for a just for a blood test, it's like, but it's going to have to be done and it will, will get done. Um, so he was just awkward, I have no idea why he was just awkward, but I've been trying to get these tests done since since I left home, since before I left, left home. But yeah, going to Shrewsbury, get in touch with some decent people that aren't anything to do with anything previous know what direction I'm going in and what information I need I feel feel like it's a good move and I'll be getting somewhere um, now these the, the husband and wife I was staying with put me in touch with a real interesting guy he's um, 71 years old and he's a raw vegan he looks 45 or 50 you can, you can just see how radiant beautiful healthy happy he is and his wife as well you just see the health and uh, yeah, he's he's researches a lot about health, diet, and cancer. He was telling me about a, a, a conference he was at with Stephen Hawking, five Nobel Prize winners. Like he's an educated guy. He wasn't just sort of sat in the audience. This is, this is yeah, this is this is him going there to to learn about stuff. And um, he shares his views and what we're up to and what we're doing and it's basically he does the same thing he takes certain supplements and he has a raw vegan diet because that will that's cancer preventative that's that's the, that's how we should be eating really this this diet we eat is, is isn't ideal for our systems which is why people are getting these digestive problems younger and younger and younger it's a really really big thing that needs addressing and taking seriously so he basically says you're doing everything needed to cure this everything you're doing is right I've got 100 
million percent confidence in you. I've seen all these stories, all these brilliant things. People getting mucked around left, right and centre through the NHS care. They're backwards thinking. They've got no interest in diet whatsoever. People cure their cancers on diet alone. There was, there was an article I found recently. These, this couple had a, had a little bookshop and they hold meetings there every day now for people that want to learn about what they did. But um, the wife had a huge tumour on her liver. The doctor said it was inoperable, can't do anything with it, you got a week to live. The husband was like, well, well I found out a lot of, lot of stuff about diet and we're going to try that. We're not, I'm not giving up on you. And a lot of people had a go at him, oh, you're giving her false hope, oh, you're doing this, oh, you're doing that. But the doctor said you've got a week to live. It's like, well, I'm going to give her some encouragement. Well, what am I going to do? Just let her rot on the sofa and accept that she's just going to fade away and watch that happen. No, I'll actually do something about it, he thought. So he did. He got on the juice, the juicing. He got on various things that I'm doing, all this, all this stuff that Lewis does. His wife went back to check the tumour on the liver in six weeks, and there was nothing but scar tissue. Now, I'm not saying that everyone's going to implement that diet and they're going to remove a huge tumour off a liver, but it's important, it helps. It clearly does something. She, she'd been through all their chemo and radio and it's done nothing. Um, so basically, he, he says, right, you get the diet right through the alternative medicine, you've got the CBD oil, you've got reishi mushroom, you've got juicing, vegan diet, all the supplements, right, so that's good. That's going to help to shrink the tumour on all sorts of angles while you're gaining weight, and then you can have the operation, and then and then you can you can look towards a new lifestyle, a new lifestyle where you're not doing the things you were before, and you're not forming, you're not in these bad habits, like I've got two friends that have had cancer and they've had tumours removed, they still smoke every day. They, they still go and have burgers and takeaways. One of them's working 65 hours a week. It's like, your lifestyle caused your cancer. You've had it chopped out and you carried on the same lifestyle. You're even still smoking. And th these are two people that are telling me, go to A&E, you're in danger, you're in danger. And, and quite frankly, I'm concerned about them because I'm changing everything about my life. I'm changing my my. The, 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 where I grew up, everyone I'm around, surrounded by family-wise, all of, I know they've given me a lot of good stuff and made me who I am, but they, my, my parents left me with a few issues that I've, I've been through. I've been addicted to weed and stuff like that, and it's, it's not their fault, but I've had my own struggles, and um, yeah, I need to I need to get them, I need to address them. I can't just keep smoking weed and cigarettes and sitting on the internet doing bugger all and wanting to veg out and mong all the time and eat shit and pizza and takeaway and donuts and that. Nah, that's not happening. I want a different life. I want a new life. I feel like that life caused the cancer. Very, very destructive lifestyle. I don't don't want to carry that on. Um yeah, so that's basically it. I'm moving to Shrew. I've got the van. I've got my, got my mobile home van. That's on eBay at the moment. Really love help just sharing that, just so people know it's for sale. And if someone's looking for that, then then they they, they can see it, sort of thing. It will catch their eye because you might ne necessarily look on eBay that week for a van, but if it pops up everywhere, then it just reaches as many people as possible. So sharing that'd be amazing. I'll put I'll put the link on after the video. Um, and yeah, I'll, I'll be giving a proper update after, after I move to Shrewsbury. Uh, it's, it's people obviously wanting to, wanting to know certain things and this, that and the other. And I'm, I'm excited to show you where I'm going to be staying. That's, that's really good. I'm excited to get there. I can't wait tomorrow. I'm having a journey over there. It's going to be brilliant. So yeah, I, I'll, I'll be sort of getting a bit more organised and doing updates as the family pressures and moving hotel to house to hotel stops um so yeah thanks for watching a huge huge appreciation to everyone donating it's helped me massively and all the people running
and all the people running around. There's been loads of people giving me the lifts and coming around to see me, old friends popping up, this, that and the other. I've got a huge thanks from the bottom of my heart to everyone who's been in touch. I've had people who don't even really know me very well making donations, giving support, kind words, offering different different ideas like meditation, little little things to look at, little inspirational stories. It helps me so much. And this campaign's really getting me through and giving me the strength to fight my illness without my without the control of my mother and fight it the way I want to fight it. It's really important to me that I fight it the way I want to fight it. And it, you guys can help me do that. Um, but yeah, I'm doing it hook or by crook. I'm, I'm, I'm no way going back to my mother's house. No way. It's not productive for me. Um, but yeah, I'll keep you updated very shortly. Hopefully get one up by, by sort of the weekend, by the end of the weekend. So thanks, thank you from the bottom of my heart. And goodbye. <laughs>